really quickly, I just want to point out one thing. The Blackhawks have a legacy of incredible broadcasters that goes back to greats like Bob Elson, Lloyd Pettit, Pat Foley, all play people who painted vivid pictures and captivated an audience while broadcasting one of the fastest, hardest, but most exciting sports to call in professional hockey. John Weideman continues a legacy of an incredible list of broadcasters for the hockey play-by-play -play that have graced the radio waves here in Chicago. It is, an it is an honor to induct a man I look up to in the broadcasting world in John Weideman. Thank you, Chris. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, man. Thank you, Chris. And Pete, thank you very much. Thank you. Go ahead, bud, if you want to. Thanks. Guys, it's an honor to be here tonight. I mean that sincerely. Um, when I enrolled in what was then the Connecticut School of Broadcasting, and it was over on 22nd Street. We were talking about that a little while ago. Um, I was just a guy that was a bartender at a comedy club, but I had high aspirations. I had high ideals, and I knew that there was something more inside of me than just a bartender at a comedy club. And I knew that that was just kind of a stopgap measure to help me to pay my bills, but to get to where I wanted to go as far as my ultimate goal was concerned. And that was to be doing what I'm doing with the Blackhawks currently. I've been very, very fortunate along the way to have met some, just some wonderful people. I love to talk about the game of hockey. So maybe that's what I should try to do. That was about the age of 18. And I can tell you that to try and get from where I was, which was outside of the hockey broadcasting world, outside of the broadcasting world, into the broadcasting world and into a point where I could actually land a hockey broadcasting job, that was like a quantum leap for me. But it was one that I was determined to make. So from that point on, I kind of geared myself toward getting to that point in my life. And I took a couple of detours. Life happens to you sometimes. And you have, to, you have to work at overcoming those things that happen and get back on the path to your goal. For me, it was putting myself through school. It was working around school so that I could continue to go to school. It was concentrating my energies on trying to be on the path that would take me most quickly to the broadcasting business. And this is back before I ever knew anything about, which was then Connecticut School of Broadcasting. It's now the Illinois Center for Broadcasting. This is just an impressive facility. I hope all of you guys take full advantage of what you have here because it's going to help you. But I had to put myself through school. I had to graduate from a university, which was the University of Kansas. I know you object to it. I don't know. <laughs> What's university? Just the University of Missouri, University. basketball, okay, okay, fair enough, fair enough. I thought you were a Missouri guy. Anyway, but I had, to, I had to get to that point where I graduated with a degree in broadcast journalism. And the whole time I was, I was working, doing work to supplement you know, my, my educational pursuits. When I finally got that degree, I was 31 years old. I didn't graduate when most of the guys that I went to high school with graduated. I was 10 years behind them. Because as I said, life happens. It happens to you. <laughs> Other things happened in my life. They caused me to detour from the path of what I was on, which was to become a hockey play-by-play -play guy eventually, my long-term goal. <clears throat> when I graduated from KU, I was 31 years old. And I thought to myself, I'm too old to go out to western Nebraska and work at, you know, WXYZ radio station for 15 years, paying my dues and hope for that break in a big market. Uh-uh. I, I decided I'm going to go right to Chicago. I love the city anyway. I love the Blackhawks. And I thought to myself, I'm going to make it happen here some way, somehow. So when I first got here, I took a job with a plumbing supply company, because that's kind of the business that I grew up in. It's the one that I knew. And I thought, that's how I'm going to make my bread and butter. And one way or another, I'm going to work my way into a position to where I'm broadcasting somehow. Sports casting is what I listed. Then I heard an ad for Connecticut School of Broadcasting. And I thought, give it a look. What do you got to lose? This is before the internet. This is before you could pull out your phone and say, oh, yeah, CSB, it's over. You know, you had to go look that up in the yellow pages. That's how old I am. But I did. And I contacted him. Rob Wexler was the guy that I spoke with. Rob enrolled me in the school. 
And I thought, I've got a broadcast journalism degree, and if I can combine that with this, this work here at CSB, with all of the contacts and all of the, the possibilities that exist there with the people that come in as professionals and teach and they know other people, I thought, I can make this work. I hand wrote a couple of cautions in this business. One of them is, you're going to encounter ego and resentment. You are going to. Stay above it. Just stay above it. Don't get caught up in that quagmire of this guy called me a whatever or, you know, I'm going to do something. No, just in this ear, out this ear, concentrate on what you're trying to do to help your career along. Um, you, can, you can waste a lot of energy getting involved in those things. I've seen people in, <laughs> it's funny, Cincinnati, I saw a radio station. They had six radio stations in one building. So you can imagine the traffic that went through there and the people that hated each other. And, you know, over, year, over the period of years, people just, there, were, there was despiction going on that I just was like, okay, guys, go ahead. You have to remain above it, and if you get involved in it, to me, the best thing to do is to listen to the person that's your attacker or accuser or whatever, listen to them and then say, you know, I'm, I'm sorry you feel that way. Is there something I can do to make it better? And if they still hold on to the, the bad feeling about you, you say, well, I'm sorry. Let me know if there's something I can do. You're remaining above that. They may never, ever like you. They may resent the fact that you have the job that they want, but that's their world. You have to keep doing your job and forgive that and just Put it over there. Leave it over there. Because if you put any energy into that, it takes away from your energy of doing your job. That's how I handle it. That part of the business where people in a high-profile position lose their jobs, that's a very difficult thing to deal with. But you have to keep in mind, if it happens to you at any point in your careers, that one door closes and another one opens. You just have to find that door. It's tough if you have a family and you have a mortgage and you have bills to pay and, you know, it's, things are tight. It's really tough. It's a hard thing. But if you give up, then you're done. If you keep fighting the good fight and if you keep pursuing, striving for the thing that you want to do, realizing your dream, you'll get there. You know, if your heart is in it, you'll get through it. If that's your first priority, you'll get through it. But for single people who all they have to do is get up in the morning, shower, shave, whatever you do, get dressed, go to work, you got the time. So make sure that you don't get distracted by your buddy calling up, dude, we got to go see this band. We got to go down to this bar. We got to go over. There's some, there's some ladies over here or ladies. You know what I'm saying? Can't speak for you. I can only speak for the guys. If your goal is to make it to the top, there's some sacrifices involved, and one of those sacrifices is social life, okay? I did it, and it paid off. So when it comes to the preparation, you may have to sacrifice some of the, that time with your buddies. Maybe you like to go and ride your bike. Maybe you, um, in your spare time, <clears throat> maybe you like to go to the club and work out. Well, if you've got a broadcast to do, you've got to choose. Do I want to have a great body, or do I want to have a great job that I can do the rest of my life. Because there's a good chance that if you get that great job and you get a lot of money doing that great job, you're going to get a health club <laughs> membership someplace else and you'll be okay. What I do, I, I feel a great sense of obligation being the radio play-by-play -play voice of the Chicago Blackhawks. I feel there's an obligation there. It's not just a job. That's an obligation. Because there are people that are tuning you in because they love the team and they want to hear what's going on. And it's my job to work as hard as I can to keep them as informed and as entertained as is possible until the moment I get off the air. And after that, I can draw a breath and take a sip of water. But up until that time, you know, I'm on the mark. So 2015 was, was exceptional because we won it here. The fans had a chance to celebrate. The city celebrated. It was the parades were just, God, you, 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 you're, you're dumbfounded that this is just washing over you. And you get away from it for a couple of days, and you go, wow, did that really happen? But it really did, and it was really cool. But if I had to pick one, 2010.
first cup in 49 years, and it happened in Philadelphia. <laughs> Place I left, people there told me I'd never get back to the NHL. <laughs> Become indispensable with whatever job or internship you're able to obtain. I mean, you've got to be the hardest working person in there. Be willing to do anything to help that station succeed. Okay? Have a good, have a good attitude. It's, it's key. It's going to be one of my points down the list. Be willing to move in order to land a broadcasting job that will help you to get up the ladder. This is an important one. This is an awesome city. We're very fortunate. We live in, in my opinion, the greatest city in the world, Chicago. I'm from Kansas City. I don't hold that opinion of Kansas City. I think Kansas City is a great town, but I think this is a better town. And I'm very happy to be working here. But if I didn't have work, and there was a job in some town, I mean, pick a destination that's not too attractive, but they had work, and it would pay, and it would help you to stay in the broadcast realm. Think seriously about doing that. Be willing to move. It's, it's a little uncomfortable. You have no friends. You've got to make a whole new circle of friends. But when you get that job, you're back working again. You have to, you have to think about that. That's a hard one. But for some people, it's easy. When you're single, it's easy. When you're married with children, God bless you guys. But you have to think about that. Once you've landed your first job, work tirelessly, but always keep your eyes open for a better situation. All right. Does anybody have a question about that? It makes it sound like you're kind of a predator or a vulture. Like you get a job working at <clears throat> a place and immediately you're looking around for a better job. Well, it's not like that. You get in, you do the job. You do all the things I talked about here. But in time, you need to think about those steps up the ladder to where you want to be. You have to keep your eyes open for those jobs. Sometimes those jobs open the same day that you take a job. Then you have a choice to make. It it's all depends on you and what kind of a professional you are, what you think is best for you. On the air, I talked about this a while ago, be over-prepared. <clears throat> you probably won't lose a job for being over-prepared, but you can certainly lose a job by being under-prepared. All right? Attitude. I believe this. I saw this written. I actually saved it. It was on a, it's funny, it was that Chinese restaurant. And I opened a fortune cookie and I saw that right around the time I was looking for my first job. And I saw that and I said, I'm saving that. And I ended up stapling it to, uh, it was a cork board that I had and made sure I looked at it every day. Attitude is 10% of what happens to you and 90% how I deal with it. On the workplace, in the workplace, Bring a good attitude and be respectful to everyone you encounter. There's an old tenet about respect. When I was in Philadelphia, a guy I worked with who I don't care if I ever see him again, he used to come at me and he'd say, respect is something that you earn. And I just would kind of recoil and I would think, no, respect is something you automatically give your fellow man until they prove to you that they're not worthy of it. And that guy proved it pretty quickly. Respect everybody. You don't have to kiss anybody's behind, but you, you do need to respect everybody because you just don't know which of the people around you are going to go up the ladder and when. You just don't know. It's a good idea to respect everybody anyway. It's a good way to go through life, I think. Be passionate about your work. Work with energy, enthusiasm, and a love for what you're doing. And that's kind of a statement I'll leave alone because I think you understand that. And my two cautions are attitude. I go back to attitude. Keep a good attitude. If you're in a workplace and somebody around you is complaining about this and complaining about that and it feels comfortable because maybe things haven't been good with you and you feel like jumping into that complaining pool and I'm going to complain too and I'm going to bellyache, I advise you to stay away from it. Listen to them. Be friend to them. But don't get into that. Keep a good attitude. Don't be the one that people say, well, he had a bad attitude or she had a bad attitude. We had to let him go. Don't be that one. Be the other one. Be the other one that's happy to be there and say, I feel bad for Bob. It's, it's too bad. He had, a, he had a tough situation. He just couldn't get that raise. But, you know, maybe he'll be better off working in sales, you know. 
And the last one is, it's kind of a fun one, you're going to encounter ego and resentment. Stay above it. Stay above it. It doesn't do you any good. It was like the conversation, Jamie, we had a little while ago about people who resent you or you have to deal with ego. There's a lot of ego in the broadcast business, guys. We all have ego. We all do. Dealing with it, in my opinion, is as simple as listening. You know, somebody wants to be the, the bull in the china shop in your environment, let them. Let them be that way. Because chances are, if you find them offensive, other people find them offensive too, but nobody's going to come out and say, I can't stand that guy because he's such an arrogant SOB whatever. They're not going to say that. It's a professional setting. Everybody's going to be professional. Let them be the bull in the china shop. You be what you are and be the best of what you are. Best, best possible whatever you are that you can be. And you'll be fine. That's all I have, guys. That's it. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you again for this. I genuinely appreciate this. Thank you very much.